Uh, Jason, you know, uh, PD5 inhibitors have been around for quite a while, which is uh, Viagra, Cialis, Levitra, and Stendra. Uh, and they've been around for a while, uh, not necessarily all at the same time, but now they're all available. And many of them now are available as generic, so they're very cost effective. Um, what do you think is the role of those in the pre or the post treatment session setting and, and, and how and when do you uh, usually use them uh, for men in the recovery phase? Yeah, sure. So I think, you know, these are often what I think of as some of the first line therapies, um, you know, for erectile dysfunction. And the reason being that, like you said, now relatively cost effective, um, relatively, uh, you know, effective and also relatively minimal side effects. Now, it is important to note there's some men who may not qualify for use of these based on other medical conditions. But in general, I use these when I'm seeing a man after prostate cancer treatment or even a man who hasn't had prostate cancer and has erectile dysfunction. Um, I'll use these as first line therapy to try to see if they'll help because oftentimes they're very useful. In men who have had prostate cancer treatment, particularly radical prostatectomy, will oftentimes start men on oral PD-5 inhibitors on a regular basis um, following surgery, and sometimes even before surgery as part of a penile rehabilitation pathway in order to help promote blood flow to the area down to the penis on a regular basis, even when a man may not be sexually active and is recovering from radical prostatectomy. And in, in a lot of cases, this has been shown to be effective in trying to help regain sexual function earlier and sooner after radical prostatectomy. Um, and, and be effective in helping them and get back to where they want to be initially. Um, but it is also important to note that if these, these uh, pills are not effective, that there are several other treatments uh, for prostate cancer, I'm sorry, for erectile dysfunction um, that, that men can then move on to. Do you think there's a difference, uh, Jason, in the efficacy of these drugs from one to the other? You know, I think uh, it's a hard, it's kind of a hard question to answer in my mind. I mean, there are certainly... I, I see very I see variability between men, I would say in practice more than more than anything in terms of, you know, for one man, Viagra might work, whereas another one, Cialis works better. Um, one thing that I often find with Viagra, for example, is men may not be properly educated on how to take it. It's most effective on an empty stomach, for example. And if you take it with a big meal, it won't get absorbed and won't be very effective. And so for those reasons, sometimes Cialis is a better option or just re-education. Um, but in general, um, I will oftentimes try a man on two or three different uh, versions of these pills or, or kind of combinations um, before moving on to another therapy, just because there is so much variability. How do you uh, counsel men when they come in and they say, you know, instead of 100 milligrams of Viagra, I took 200 milligrams and that actually works for me. Is that okay? Well, I always recommend to take um, only the recommended maximum dose. And the reason for that is that at a certain threshold, the receptors that these medications are working on on a molecular level are saturated. They're basically getting all the drug that they can handle. And all we're doing at that point is essentially increasing risk for side effects, for dangerous drops in blood pressure, for um, heart attack and, and things like that. So I don't personally recommend taking those uh, medications at higher doses than recommended. Thanks. Appreciate that. I get asked that all the time. 